On this week's episode, the projected COVID baby boom has turned into a baby bust. Now, could there be consequences because of it? Also, one man's junk turns into another person's treasure, literally how a yard sale find is paying off. And back to front, front to back, first come, first serve, a popular airline changing their seating policy. Thanks for joining another episode of Anchors Away. I am Robert Burns, along with Sarah Threadgill. Remember, you can now follow us for free wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, I say follow now because a lot of the platforms are taking away the word subscribe because people think that the word subscribe means you got to pay for it. It's absolutely free. It's a podcast. You shouldn't be paying for it. We're not Joe Rogan or anything like that. We're just us. Uh, I wish. Former TV news. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Former TV news anchor is now doing this for free, essentially, for you. Uh, hello, Sarah. Hello, Robert. Yes, uh, I do like this This getting rid of subscribe. It does have a connotation to it. Yeah, it's a little funky. I get that. I felt kind of sleazy saying subscribe and mm-hmm. tell your friend. Now, just follow us. Who cares? Yeah, and then you can follow us on Facebook. You can follow us on the podcast. You can follow us everywhere you want. Um, but we are following three different stories here this week for you. And because I told Sarah that I overate at dinner today, uh, I'm feeling a little sluggish and I'm going to let her take the first story. So handing it off, handing it off. Okay. So this is one that I thought was interesting. You know me, I'm a history buff. I like anything that has to do with history. So this guy goes to a yard sale and finds this cute pretty beautiful blue and white porcelain bowl $35 decides I'm going to go ahead and purchase this it's it's what I want decides he's going to take it to get uh, I guess checked out at Sotheby's and it turns out this thing is a Chinese artifact a 15th century Chinese artifact worth up to half a million dollars and he paid what 35 bucks for it $35 for it at a yard sale Yeah, so you never know what you'll find. I am not a person who can go to yard sales. I can't stand it. I feel like I'm just rummaging through, you know, a a box full. It's like a box sale at the mall. I can't do it. But every now and then you hear stories like this where people spend 35 bucks and turn that into 300,000. But my question would be to this person, if I were interviewing them, what made you think this needed to be appraised by Sotheby's? What exactly. was, the, what was the, the, the flicker that said, hey, get someone else to look at this and see if it's worth anything? Exactly, exactly. It's a cobalt blue painted bowl. It's small, about six inches in diameter. Uh, and, you know, he, he took it to go get appraised, and they decided it's from this 14th century or the 1400s from the it's Ming, the Ming dynasty. dynasty. Anything it's- from the Ming dynasty is worth money. Money, money. And it's one of six bowls, apparently, known to exist. So, uh, you know, very, very rare find. But you're right. How did he know this bowl might be worth something? Yeah, it's a little blue painted, but it actually looks Greek, not even uh, Asian to me at that point. But it, it's six inches. I would never think to I would never think to buy it. I would look at it and say, and we'll have obviously the link in the show notes. But I would look at it and say, where are we going to put that? Where are we going to use that? That has no purpose in our in our house. And this guy said, I got 35 bucks. And now he is, he's pretty much set. And I can't tell uh, if he's an older gentleman. The picture is of an older gentleman's hands. But uh, he's going to retire and or go on a really good trip to uh, anywhere he wants and leaving New Haven, Connecticut. Going to go to China. Going to go to, you know, wherever he wants to go with that much money. He can go back and forth a few times. Um, But most of these, most of these bowls, most of these artifacts are in museums. And yeah. so that leads to the question, you know, if he's able to sell this, what happens to it? Is it going to eventually go to a museum? Is it going to just be in someone else's private collection? Uh, does he have it just appraised and, and keep it for insurance reasons, which I think cat's out of the bag. Now people know who you are and they know where it'll be. Don't leave it in your house. Uh, I mean, I, I would hire like a personal guard to watch over that bowl, I honestly think, because it, it's such a rare find. And it's one of six bowls that they know of that exists. And this one is in pretty good shape from what they're saying. It has a shallow chip and a little warping on the rim. But, um, you know, they say that that's consistent with its age. If you look at it, it looks like something that you would see at an antique store in any small town, 
you know, America. It's just a blue and white bowl decorated with flowers and um, very pretty, but half a million dollars. Have you ever found anything at a yard sale that just didn't look like it was only worth the $4.25 you bartered for? No, but, I, you know, mm -hmm. my parents, and, and maybe this is a Southern thing or a Texas thing, like antique shops are everywhere right. and you know every time i've walked into one i keep thinking to myself okay i'm gonna find something i'm gonna find something of value i'm gonna find something really old <laughs> and really cool i don't know what i'm that's the thing you have to know what you're looking for that's you have true. to know you have to go in there and know what you're looking for yeah this guy we don't know if he knew what he was looking for if he just kind of got lucky and knows somebody who knows something about what to look for uh but he did and and you know congratulations to him Anybody listening to this story now, you're probably going to go to the next couple of yard sales that are going to show up, mask in hand, and see what kind of treasures you can find. And you'll realize that most of it is just, you know, used kids' toys and clothes and things you really have, batteries, things you have no use for that they're just trying to get the hell out of their house before they move. Yeah, one man's junk truly can be another man's treasure. So, you know, we were talking about not knowing, um, you know, what to look for. Mm -hmm. So you get on an airplane. And you really, it just depends on the airline. You don't know, um, you know, Southwest is pick your own seat. Um, JetBlue has always been back to front. There's others that are front to back. Uh, now JetBlue is coming out and saying, we're just going to change our policy. Um, so you're going to have to be doing something different now. And it's what to look for, what seat to look for. Yeah, I love the transition. That was not the way I would have transitioned it, <laughs> but it was a fine transition nonetheless. I would have gone with how the guy was going to, we said he was going to go fly anywhere he wants. Uh, meanwhile, yes, uh, we're talking about JetBlue um, changing their seating policy. They're ending their back-to-front boarding policy. I do have an issue with this. Uh, but as you mentioned, other airlines, you got Southwest, we've got American, we got Spirit, we got Frontier, Sun Country, name it. Uh, they usually use, you know, the groups, line up at the groups, you line up at the poles um, or zone boarding to try and get people in there. The one thing I hate is front to back boarding because, and this is exactly what JetBlue is ending, there's always that look of shame when you're passing through the first class people who are already in their seats and you're going to your, I got the cheapo seat in the back of the plane and you got to carry your bag and maybe it touches someone's shoulder and then you're the, you're the jerk who's hitting people with their bag or, or your kid or whatever it is. I hate that. I hate that feeling. But then again, I've never flown first class either, so I wouldn't know the difference. But um, yeah, so this is something that they're changing on the onset of the pandemic is now more Americans are going to start to travel like I am getting on a plane. Um, what are we in March next month to go to Orlando? Uh, I will not be sitting in first class, so I will be boarding and going right past everyone with that eyes down, holding my bag close to my chest like like it's a little Chinese bowl I just found at a, a <laughs> sale. Um, well, but that's going to be me. Here's my question. If it's meant to, uh, in this post-pandemic or pandemic era is policy that they're making, they're no longer boarding planes back to front, JetBlue. How is that helping not transmit COVID if you're having to walk through the first class who's already seated and all the other people who got seated first to get to the back of the plane? I would think it would be the opposite to mitigate any um, you know, COVID spreading. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is um, the back to front boarding policy, uh, kind of something that a couple of airlines, Delta, United, also JetBlue, as we're talking about, uh, they adopted it when coronavirus first broke out. Nobody was flying anyway at the time. Um, but, you know, like I mentioned, Delta and United, they've already ended that policy for them as well. It was kind of a temporary thing. Um, it just has taken JetBlue a little bit of time to get to that level for them and they're kind of citing just the way that people are getting vaccinated different type of health measures that they're already in place now they don't need to have it anymore so now you can walk past the people uh, on the planes in theory and be just fine with the uh, guidelines that are in place which i get it doesn't mean i gotta like it i get it but again i'm still walking past everyone and i feel like a jerk when i'm when i'm going through i don't know if anyone's gonna even care or or how soon people are going to get on flights again yeah and you know i i'm this i fly southwest a lot number one it's to me a little more uh, co uh cost effective for for the pocketbook but also with southwest you just pick your seat and mm -hmm. honestly isn't that what we all want <laughs> yeah 
yeah, I just want to pick my seat. I want to get on there and I want to sit in the window. No one talk to me. I want to fi- fall asleep with my little neck pillow and I want to call it a day. But to get to that point, I don't know. I mean, do you do you would you care if you have to go front to back or back to front? I wouldn't even think that this is even a story that requires a headline. It's just a change. Like, okay, great, whatever. I got to get on the plane. Well, I, I think there's people like you and I who fly every now and then. Um, you know, I worked um, on Capitol Hill, so I would fly from Austin to D.C. Uh, pretty often. And I will tell you, especially members of Congress. I mean, they're flying. Um, you know, weekly. And so I think for people that have to do it for work and business and all that, yeah, this might, this might be um, a change that they don't want to deal with, but I don't know. I just think we're all adults. Let us pick our own seat. Right. Yeah. And you know, and a good point I just, I just thought of as well is that, um, you know, they're trying to get back to normal and everybody's just ready to get the hell out of the house. So people are going to start to want to fly more and just get out of town and go somewhere and do something, anything. And if that is, um, you know, able to happen because you get get on a plane and you've either had your vaccine or you have your mask on or you've already had COVID and you're okay, um, you know, it is what it is. And so I think it's just one of those things, the last domino to fall for these for these airlines who are are trying to make some money because they were just bleeding throughout the pandemic i don't even know why they were still running airplanes during you know april and may of last year they were uh, not many but they were and so now they're going to start to pick back up and like i said i'll be on the planes i'll let you know how it is next month uh, after i get back um but i can't imagine it's going to be that much different than what i was used to before headphones other on than, leave me the hell alone other than they said mask the wearing a mask has not changed so right. i think that's you know I think we're good with that and with everybody getting vaccinated, hopefully sooner rather than later. Yeah, I think we're okay. All right, we do want to thank our sponsor for this show, Anchor. It's the easiest way for us to bring you the podcast. They give us everything we need. It's all in one place. And most importantly, it's all free. Everything on our iPhones, on our iPads, on our computers, all the creation tools to edit, it's all included, and they distribute the show for us. Send it to Spotify, send it to Apple, send it to Google. So, you can start your own podcast, get in on the game, download the Anchor app, or go to anchor.fm to get started. Uh, all right, so uh, I'm going to pull up my notes here because I don't remember what the heck the third We're talking story babies. Was. We're talking babies. Oh, We're right, 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 right. How could My you story. Forget? This this is actually the story I picked for this week. Uh, the COVID. So before, I think when we first started this show, before Sarah was even around on this show, um, I predicted that there were going to be a boatload of babies that were made nine months after those COVID restrictions came and everyone was home with nothing else to do. I will be the first person to say I am wrong. I lost the bet. Keep the money. It is what it is. Because there are studies now showing that what was thought to be, in my mind, a baby boom is more so becoming a baby bust because people are just not having kids in 2020, or at least to this point of 2021. Uh, Overall, 29 state health departments say they are down 7% in new baby births nine months after COVID was declared a pandemic. So, very surprising. Yeah, I would have thought nothing else to do. Stay home, especially in the beginning. Stay home and drink and just hang out with your significant other. And oops, we got a kid. But you know what? (laughs) Nope, didn't happen that way. People thought, I don't know what is going to happen. People thought about the financial aspect of it as well. You know, we all know how the economy went. We've got three stimulus checks to this point. Um, But yeah, so there's a sharp decline in baby births. And they're saying that this is going to have an, a negative effect, actually, on the economy. People aren't going to spend money on baby things. Um, people aren't going to be doing family trips. People are going to be more cost conscious, as you just mentioned a second ago, talking about using Southwest because of, you know, the, the price of things. Um, and I think a lot of people's minds have changed. And yeah, you're getting, you know, more money in the stimulus because you got a kid, but it still costs a lot more up front to have the baby. Exactly. And as someone that has two children, You know, uh, there was so much uncertainty, especially when this all uh, came out and we all started going through lockdown and and what would this look like and what would this mean and what would this mean for our pocketbook and what would this mean, um, you know, for our children. And so I think people have just been 
extra careful <laughs> in their yeah. in their uh, lockdown togetherness. Yeah, so there was a sociologist from the University of Maryland that actually contributed to the story and said that uh, birth rates had been falling for about a decade. And I think that's just more the trend of people are having kids later on in life. We get that. But also, they say December, the drop in birth in December was the largest they saw since the baby boom ended in 1964. Wow. So the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, as fun as the 90s were— um, this is the lowest that we have ever seen as far as as far as new kids coming around, which I guess that means there'll be less of them on the flight. I guess there's a little bit <laughs> exactly. of a win there. Um, but yeah, there's there's you know, those those are numbers that you just can't kind of can't fight. And here um, in New York, the fourth most populated state, um, we're still down close to 10 percent as well. So you would think that even more people, more of a chance, not so much. Yeah. And I think people. uh you know, I mean, it, it's the cost issue. It's and, and I think just this day and age, people are having less kids. And my mom is one of nine children. Um, you know, my mother-in-law is is one of four. I'm one of four children. But you're seeing the trend where people are starting to have, you know, two and three children mm -hmm. um, instead of the, the larger amount. So I think that maybe, you know, that's also a consideration. Ah, two and three kids. That just sounds like a lot of work. It is I got a lot a of work. Dog and a cat, and I can't handle it most days. It is a lot of work. And you know, here's a little factoid that I didn't know as a Texan. It says Texas accounts for nearly nine percent of the U.S. population. Did you know that? I mean, everything's bigger in Texas, even the That's population. Right. Apparently. That's right. You learn something every day. Mm -hmm. So um, keep your money in your pocket, I guess, and don't make <laughs> stupid bets. Like I just lost saying that people were going to lose their minds and go in hibernation and come out with a little cub after nine months. Not Save happening. the money, go to a yard sale, buy a $35 bowl, get half a million dollars, and then jump on the plane and pick whatever seat you want. Yeah, that's it. Send 10 cents a day. You can adopt whatever baby you want at that <laughs> point if you got that kind of money. Um, that's good for me. Uh, yeah. Those are three stories that'll get you through the weekend and at least have you talking about something other than real life. You know, what's going on Emulous, out there? Emulous, checks, and COVID, and yeah, all the other fun the stuff we about. love talking about. Yeah, and and baseball that hasn't started yet, and basketball <sighs> that doesn't mean much, and football that's not being played. Really, what else do we have other than um, talking about potential flights and spending the money that we got from a yard sale? So, Sarah, good to talk to you again this week. You too. Remember out there for listening to us, you can follow us on whatever platform it is that you're listening to us on, uh, or that there is. You can also follow us on social medias as well. Uh, I am at Robert Burns TV. Sarah Threadgill News. And we will talk to you again next week. Later. Later.